What's going on guys? So if you didn't see the video where we installed forks on the front of the excavator, you should go back and check that one out. Also made a really cool pallet attachment for the front, which gives me the ability to lift things up really high. Basically gives me a super cool semi-excavator forklift hybrid, which gives me a huge amount of capability, especially if I need to lift heavy things up or get them down. So that is what we will be using today. We are going to be removing the air conditioner that came on the Forest River Surveyor and replacing it with a new Furion Chill Cube inverter air conditioner. Basically a mini split that's all combined into one. It is very, very cool. Let's go take a look at that real quick. Okay, so here it is. Here's the box for it over here. And this is called the Furion Chill Cube Variable Speed RV Rooftop Air Conditioning Unit. This one does not have the heat pump in it. And a heat pump will be available for these starting around July of 2024, this year. So that's going to be really cool for a lot of folks who have been waiting for that. A lot of perks behind this. It draws less power on startup. It draws less power when it's running. It is super, 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 super quiet. I did a big video on this, a couple of videos on this recently. And overall, it is going to be a huge upgrade, especially with the thermostat that lets you kind of move around the RV and it follows you as a thermostat instead of being stuck on one spot on the wall, only reading temperature in that one area. So the process today, and this is that hoist system that I opted not to use just because this thing would rock a lot when we have it lifted with the excavator and it was just more dangerous. So the forks I think will work out really, really well. Basically, we are going to transfer the AC unit from here to the pallets on the front of the forks of the excavator. But before we do that, we actually have to remove the air conditioner from the roof so we have a spot to put this once we get it up there. And that all begins by taking all the inner components off. If you don't know how RV air conditioners install, we'll give you a quick crash course on it. Okay, so the way this works, let's turn on some lights in here, is we simply need to remove this cover right here. And this is your return air, so this is what gets sucked in from the RV and then it gets blown out here. We will unscrew four Phillips head. We got two right here, and then we have two underneath these caps right here. This part will come out. We'll disconnect everything, but before doing any of that, we're going to disconnect full power from the RV so we don't have any chance of getting electrocuted. This specific unit does run off of a thermostat right here versus this one back here, which has its own controls on it. So the new one is not going to be the same as this. The new one is not going to use this thermostat anymore, so this will be just be a dead thermostat on the wall unless I choose to remove it. We won't have any wires going from here to the thermostat because it's all wireless. There's a remote that I control all of the functions from, and it also acts as a thermostat with follow me, which basically means if I take the thermostat from here, if I choose to put it on the wall here, and I put it up here on the bunk, this is where it's reading air temperature, and it will try to make sure that the inside of the RV gets to the temperature that the thermostat is set for. Super, super cool. But the process to get started here is to remove the screws from here, and then we'll get to the wiring aspect. So we got all four screws out, and it's going to hang up here so you don't have to worry about it falling until you pull these little clips right here. And then the whole thing comes down. Now, the next step is actually uh, pretty simple, to be honest. First of all, we're going to disconnect all of this stuff right here. This is our power, right? And then you have these four hex screws. They're very, very long. They go all the way through to the top of the unit. Once you pull these four out, this piece will come down and the whole assembly comes out. Once the assembly is disconnected from the main unit, basically this control box right here is disconnected from a power perspective and a thermostat perspective. You just remove this top panel and the top AC unit on top of the RV is free. That's all it takes. It is super, super simple to remove these. Just be aware that it's kind of heavy. So you are going to have weight to the top unit. This portion right here doesn't weigh much. But yeah, all we're going to need to do is make all of our disconnections here. And like I said, before we do that, we want to be sure power is turned off to the RV. And that's very easy by simply disconnecting power from the RV. Because the air conditioning units are both 120 volt units and we don't have a large inverter to power those AC units off the battery system, it's as simple as unplugging this and then just making sure that we turn our 12 volt system off with the battery disconnect. Turning 12 volts off is as simple as coming up here and turning it off. 
A lot of RVs will have power disconnect switches like that. Some won't. If you do not, you need to disconnect the battery of your RV. Okay, next we're going to come in. We're going to disconnect our power. We're going to disconnect all of our thermostat connections. All this stuff right here. And let's see how they have all this ran. So you want to be sure you are doing this the right way. Okay, so this is probably going to the furnace, furnace, all right, and then these right here are going to be wires for the thermostat, and they probably mark them thermostat, yep, thermostat, so we're just going to take these wires out, take these wires out, take these wires out right here, and then these wires out right here. There we go. Now the wires up here are also connected. So basically we're isolating what goes to the RV itself from what's going to the AC unit itself. Basically we just want to be able to remove everything and not have anything get caught. All right, so we have these wires disconnected now and these went to the Okay, so that's our 12 volt and our ground connections. And this right here is our free sensor. So now we are completely disconnected. So once I remove these, this whole panel should drop down except for my 120 connection up here. So this is where it comes to the wall. I'll have to get into this box so I can go ahead and disconnect those wires. Okay, so to remove the control box, it's just a Phillips head screw on each side and then it drops down and then you have your AC wires in here that you simply can pull out and disconnect, and then it will release your main harness right here. And of course, you'll be reusing this for the new AC unit. And we have the control box completely removed. So again, all we have left, 12 volt power and ground, our AC connections right here. This connects the control box to the fan blower motor, everything inside of there. Your thermostat connections up here and everything else is out. All right, so all we have to do at this point is to disconnect the top from the bottom unit by unscrewing these. Uh, no kidding, to this point, it's all of maybe 15 minutes, super, super quick. So if you're on the fence about removing components, as long as you can know where things go back, if you're gonna be replacing unit, things like that, it's not a very long process. What I highly recommend is you pull your wires down before you disconnect them, use your camera phone and take pictures of everything just in case you need to go back to reference something. It just makes sense to do that. Okay, so we are outside of the RV, of course. This is the new unit. We have it on the pallet on the tractor. We'll be transferring it to this one as soon as we get that unit pulled off of the top of the RV. Now we're gonna keep the Furion Chill unit up here. That one will just stay up there. I don't know how often we'll use it, but yeah, that one will just be up there just so I don't have a big hole up there. Um, and it's always good to have backup. I mean, I know that it sounds kind of ridiculous to have a backup AC, but it might actually make sense sometimes. Perhaps if we're on a 50 amp connection or a 30 amp connection, it'd be cool to see if we can run both of these off of a 30 amp. I don't think we will, but it's worth finding out. Anyways, now, the process of removing that one is to get this positioned up there next to it, get it unscrewed, and then we're gonna load that unit on top of here. Okay, so we're on top of the surveyor. You can see how I have this positioned. It might actually make more sense to put it right here over the solar panel. Um, it's a little difficult to see the angles. That's the reason why I kind of put it right there. This unit is definitely a lot longer than the cube is. I'd probably say about 10 inches longer. 
It always helps if you're going to be on top of your RV, at least the way I feel, is if you put your slide outs out. Only because there's this perception of width, and that width makes you feel a little bit more confident if you're going to be working on top of your RV. The Brookstone has a huge radius to the top versus this. This has a slight radius, but it's nowhere near as pronounced as the Brookstone. So this actually feels a little bit safer, perhaps, because it's a little flatter. But this is what everything looks like. Now, I am told this unit weighs like 80 something pounds. So it's not what I would consider to be super lightweight. It weighs about as much as a heavy e-bike. So I could either do this myself or I could try to get a friend or someone to come over and help me do it. But I tend to always do these things myself, so I'll probably just do that. And then that unit weighs about the same. So loading this one on and loading that one off or offloading that one on here is really the most intensive part of all of this. Everything else is just kind of aligning stuff, getting things prepped, and then making your wired connections. But this is the, uh, this is the stressful part, and this is really why I had this thing made so I'd have the ability to do some of this stuff uh, more independently if I need to. But essentially, we need to unbolt the four bolts that hold this in place, heft it up, put it on here, and we'll be in good shape. Okay, so I'm back down off the roof. I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew these four bolts, drop this piece down, and both the top and bottom unit will be disconnected at that point, and I'll be able to move the top unit where I want to. Okay, so once I unscrewed those four bolts, the whole assembly just kind of drops down. So those are my super long bolts, basically compresses the big foam seal around this down so you don't get any water intrusion in there. But this whole unit is ready to remove now. This is the only harness that's gonna follow it up and out. And we are ready to move this onto the uh, excavator forks. Okay, since I'm doing this alone, I figured probably not a great idea to record and try to heft this up. But yeah, lifted it up, got it onto there. Have a big hole in the roof now. Thankfully, we don't have any rain coming, even though it kind of looks like we do. We're gonna rotate that down, get this one offloaded, load that one on, and get it back up here. All right. First thing I wanna do, raise it up a little bit. And I should just be able to rotate it around. And bring it down. rushing game. You don't want to make a mistake and destroy something on accident unless you want to do it intentionally. So. Forgot to adjust the camera. Okay, so now we're going to go down, offload the old one, onload the new one. Okay, so we have the old one off, have the new one on. We're going to raise it back up and get it put on top of the roof. Get it up there. Again, nice and slow. Hopefully that's, uh, that's good enough. Okay, I think that looks good. So we are positioned, I think, where we need to be. How do you think that looks? I'm gonna clean off this area real quick, move the air conditioner into place, get all this stuff put up, and we should be able to go inside and work on the interior portion. Okay, again, not smart to record and lift heavy things on precariously tall objects, but we have it in place. I leaned down real close to see if I could get the seal as lined up as possible, and I think we're pretty much dead on, but it looks really good. Again, it's a lot smaller overall length, and you could tell because of this piece right here, that's where the back cushion that supports the back portion of that AC sits. 
So yeah, that AC is significantly longer than this one. And you could kind of tell when you saw the video over at the Furion building or the Lippert building where they had it on top of one of the units, you could tell it was a lot shorter in profile than the, uh, or at least lengthwise than the uh, typical unit. So we, uh, we got this in place. Let's get this all put away. We'll go inside and start the process of getting everything connected. Okay, so I know when I was filming this over at Lippert's headquarters, there were some questions regarding if this was compatible or a direct swap for other brands like Dometic, aside from just Furion. Well, this should be a direct swap for anybody because once you remove the old unit, you're removing everything, including the interior piece, the exterior piece. The only thing that you're leaving behind are your thermostat controls, which you're not gonna need. So I can cap these off or not even use them because there's no power going to them once it's disconnected. Uh, your 12 volt wires right here and then your 110 or 120 volt wires right here. Aside from that, everything else is gone. So you should be able to replace any unit with this. Now, it lined up really good. All the bolt holes, the four that pinch it in place are all where they need to be. I don't think we're going to need to do a lot of moving this around. Anyways, I have the interior components right here. All the pieces that are going to go up. The new control box. The super long bolts. And this is going to be the interior panel. The control panel. And let's see how I get it out of here. So, there we go. there are all your controls and then of course you do have a remote control which is going to be somewhere around here i may have already taken it out but it mounts to that actually it's right there all right let's see what we have to connect here and then uh proceed okay so the mounting bracket on the inside and the controls separate you have a tab right here and then the sides simply pop out this is the part you're going to want to put on first. This is where all of your electrical connections are right there as well. So once we get this piece up, this will actually secure the AC to the roof and help us prevent any leaks from coming in. Okay, so we have everything mounted. We have the four screws holding it in place. It's pinched up real well. You can see the markings up here, which show you what direction you need to face it. Basically, the air louvers are going to be coming out this way towards the front of the RV. And then they rotate up and down, so they spread the air out quite a bit. This is how it looks. So, I'm going to have to figure out wire routing because I might likely have to get these wires to come into this space so they can connect right here because it's kind of backwards from the system we removed. The return air was right here, so all the wires routed to this side right here. Whereas this one has a return air right here. So everything's kind of reversed. I think we have some room to squeeze. Yeah, we definitely have room to put the stuff up here and then we'll have to seal it all off. Okay, so I've connected the wires. Basically, we have our common positive ground. There's a shroud that I'm gonna install above all this. None of this stuff is needed anymore. Now, the one question I have, and I don't know the answer, is that I know this thermostat used to control the furnace. And I will no longer have the capability of controlling the furnace without this thermostat being in place. So I don't know what I'm supposed to do about heat. So that's going to be a big pause for me until I figure out specifically how I can manage heat. Because, to give you an idea of what's going on here, um, two of these wires go to the furnace to kick it on. The output comes off of that control box, which goes to the old Furion unit. And it's actually marked furnace. Again, that's so I can control it from this thermostat. I no longer have that wire there anymore. And I don't specifically know where on this unit you would tie in because there's no furnace wire coming out. Because again, you're not using a traditional thermostat with this setup. So I'm gonna have to figure out what I need to do to allow me to still have furnace controls. That's gonna be a, an interesting one for me. but. As it stands, I'm connected. I mean, this is all set. None of this stuff right here needs to be connected anymore. I'm gonna cap all of that off. Uh, this right here and this both connect to the main control panel, which I'll connect to here in a second. 
but I might just go ahead and cap this stuff off, tuck it in there for now, just so I can see how the setup works. But just keep in mind what I was just talking about regarding the furnace, because that could be an issue. And it's definitely an issue. I just got to figure out how to overcome it. Okay, so I figured out what I need to do. I'm not going to do it today because I got to think about the wiring aspect of it, but I need to rewire the thermostat independently of the air conditioner. Basically, I need to take the furnace wires coming out. Thankfully, I have the 12 volt wires right here, which will still allow me to power the thermostat. And that's the reason why they're there. So those are so you use the thermostat to kick on 12 volts for your furnace not for the AC. The AC is 110, 120 volts, so it's not tied to that. That's just for your furnace. So basically, I need to be able to kick this back on just to turn on the furnace, and that's it. Aside from that, everything else is good. I had to drop this back down because this block right here, this shield, needs to be in place before you tighten this back up. Uh, I didn't do that, so I had to drop it back down to do that. I got both of my wired connections here. They just plug in. We're ready to put this thing up there and test it out. Let's see how it works. Okay, so we have batteries in the remote. I do not have power turned back on yet. Um, everything is connected. I had the four screws. You have two screws here and then you have two screws here. So those are all in place. Let's go ahead and get the RV powered up and see how this works. Okay, fingers crossed. Okay, we got power on. Actually, I can hear the refrigerator. Here's something. Yeah, so that is my refrigerator running. Let's hit power. Check that out. Oh man. That is super cool, literally. Pun intended. You hear how quiet that is? I mean, all you pretty much hear is a little fan noise and air blowing out. That is absolutely amazing. And the amount of airflow is ridiculous. Now this is the same unit that comes in a lot of Brinkley units. So if you have a Brinkley and you have this AC unit in your Brinkley, Tell me what you think about it, because the performance so far is pretty dang phenomenal. That is absolutely awesome. So what we want to do is I want to put this on auto and I want to set it for, let's just say 77 degrees and then we'll turn it on. I guess, yeah, that's the auto. Follow me is the button you would press if you want this to be kind of a portable thermostat for you. I want to take it to the room. I want to take it up front. Maybe this area is cool, but I want this area back here to be cool. I can keep this next to the bed and this will essentially be the thermostat. But yeah, that is working fantastic. Very cool. We're going to have quite a few follow-up videos on this, including videos featuring this being ran off of portable power stations. I think that's going to be a big one for most folks. And we're going to see just how much power it requires to run this. And if this truly can run off of some of the battery banks that could not power up the other Furion units. So this is going to be a really, really cool exercise in figuring out if this is going to be the right unit for you to upgrade to. Because it's super nice. Just from a noise perspective, that in itself makes it worth it. Or at least it does to me. Now, if I want to turn the fan down to get this quieter. Let's see here. Wait, I gotta turn it to cool, put it on low. Let's see how much quieter it gets. Now this is an 18,000 BTU unit, so think about that. So even on its lower settings, it could be pumping out as much cold air as the larger systems on their high settings. Because it's on low now, it's still putting out a good amount of air, and the refrigerator is actually louder. That is cool. Anyways, guys, we're gonna wrap this video up. This was a preliminary installation. It's gonna start getting dark on me. I wanna get everything put away, but we will have plenty of follow-up videos on this new Furion Chill Cube Inverter Air Conditioner. Again, this is kind of the mini split of RV air conditioning. Super cool. A few more things I need to do to get this thing completely installed, including get my furnace wired back up. I'm gonna to have to figure that one out. It's gonna take me a brainstorming session with myself to figure out what I'm gonna to need to do to get that up and running again. But this is really awesome. Great, great job. Love that they finally brought this to the RV market. Guys, I will try to put a link in the description. I don't know if this is gonna be readily available for retail purchase yet. I know the folks over at eTrailer will be carrying it, which is super cool, um, but I don't know if you can get it quite yet. By the time you watch this video later, you know, months from now, I'm sure it's gonna be available though. So just keep that in mind. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.